Hello, this is Mr. Zanoletto. I'm going to go ahead and do the odds for the extra practice on this video, and I'll add the evens as my plan on the other, on another video. Um, first, I always like to recognize what they're asking for. Here they're asking for the arc measure of H, J, G. So that's this arc. And if you look at that, this angle is 50. That makes this angle 50 as well. And the reason why I bring that up is with this being a diameter, that makes this 50, 50. I can take the 180 that the semicircle would make, 180 minus the 100 that we have accounted for in these two 50 degree angles, and that makes this 80. Now the reason why that's important is we know that this angle being a central angle makes this arc 80 degrees. And in the end, my arc measure would be 360 degrees minus the blue arc, which is 80 degrees. And that makes our <coughs> measure of angle HJG equal to 280 degrees. The next question, measure of X, S, T. That's this angle, X, S, T. So we're looking for this angle. Um, again, we have a diameter here. And we have congruent. This arc is equal to this central angle, X plus 55. And then that would make this angle also x plus 55, which would make this arc, well actually, you can take this arc out here and make that a semicircle, or you can bring this arc in to the central angle. Remember, central angles and arcs are the same. So that's going to make this 135 plus x. These two angles should add up. 135 plus x plus the other angle, x plus 55, should make a linear pair, which is 180 degrees. Now, working through that, I have 2x plus the 190 equals 180. Subtract 190 from both sides, 2x equals negative 10, so x equals negative 5. That's my x. They didn't ask me for x. They asked me for the measure of x s t, which I said is the same as this arc, 135 plus x. So 135 plus x would be 135 plus a negative 5, which is 130. So the measure of arc, I mean angle, x s t is equal to 130. So you have both of those, you know, one and three. Let's move on to number five. Number five, here, they say find the measure of the arc or angle indicated. Well, the question mark is the indicated arc, x, y. And if we look at this, I would say that we have an inscribed angle I inscribe um, quadrilateral, so this angle and this angle have to add up to 180. Well, if that's 100, it doesn't take a lot of math to figure this must be 80. And that angle, 80 degrees, intercepts here, this arc, LXY, and it's really LY. So the LY is going to be twice this angle because we have that measurement. The measurement of the angle, if it's on the circle, equals half the arc. Well, the angle is 80 degrees. Multiply both sides by 2, you get 160. So this, from here to here, is 160. Okay. 
Once I have that, now the rest of the arc is 160 minus 40. 160 minus this 40 has to equal the question mark. So in the end, the question mark will equal 160 minus the 40. So question mark equals 120 degrees. And there's other ways to do that problem, but that I think is the most direct. The next way, next question, the indicated arc or angle is the arc here. Now, similar to what we just did, I would almost tackle it exactly the same. This is 94, and this is an inscribed, so these two match up, so 180 minus 94. 180 minus 94 is going to give me 86 degrees. 86 degrees. So that makes this 86 degrees. And just like we talked about the last time, we had this angle intercepts this arc. And that arc that we're talking about is the same Inscribed angle, vertex is on the circle, so the measure of the angle equals half the arc. The angle equals 86 degrees, so that's one half the arc. Double both, you get 172 is the arc. So this is 172. This 172 minus 66 will equal this, the um, question mark. So we have question mark equals 172 minus the 66. 172 minus the 66, question mark then would equal 106. Now, looking at the other side, the odds on the other side, number nine, find the measure of the arc or angle indicated. Assume that the lines that appear tangent are tangent. So, on this first one, or our QD. And since the vertex is inside the circle, we have the equation measure of the angle equals the um, sum of the arcs. One half arc plus arc. That is, <clears throat> the angle is 120. We get one half arc, the intercepted arc is 170, and the vertical angles intercepted arc is the question mark. Double both sides, you get 240 equals 170 plus the question mark. And in this case, we subtract 170 from both sides, and we should get 70. So question mark equals 170. And that was strictly from our equation, measure of angle equals 1 half arc plus arc. I set it up, doubled both sides, and subtracted 170 from both. The next indicated angle or arc is, again, an arc, and it's this inside. Now, these are two tangents. So what I want to stress is that's the arc we're looking for. What I highlighted in yellow, realize that the arc that I just drew in orange, both of those add up to 180, I mean 360. Both of those add up to 360. So we have an angle outside. So the measure of the angle outside equals half arc minus arc. Now, substitute in what we know, 50 degrees equals one half. Now this is my question mark. This is 360 minus my question mark. So I'm going to say 360 minus the question mark minus question mark. This being the orange measure of the arc 
and this being the yellow measure of the arc. So now, if I look at that, double both sides as usual, you get this. And that's going to be 360 minus question mark minus question mark, which is really 360 minus two question marks. Subtract 100 from both sides, you get 0 equals 260 minus two question marks. I can add two question marks to both sides, and I get two question marks equals 260. Divide by two, you get question mark equals 130. And very quickly, let's go ahead and throw that in there. If this was 130, 360 minus 130 is 230. Now if I take 230 minus 130, that's 100. Half of 100 is 50. It works. So I check. That's number 11. Number 13, moving along. Measure of DCB. So they want the measure of this angle. They want the measure of that angle, not the 53x plus 1. That is the angle, but we want the measure of that angle. Vertex is on the circle. If vertex is on the circle, the measure of the angle equals half the arc. And remember, this is the angle measure. And just to stress what we're looking at here, the information they gave us was this was the arc. That's the arc measure. And I'm just going to plug it into that equation. So plugging that into that equation, we get 53x plus 1 equals half of the arc, which is 110x minus 2. Um, double both sides. I, st I still like doing that. It gets rid of the fraction, which we all like doing. But if I double this, I get 106x plus 2. I have 110x minus 2. Subtract 100 from both sides. You get 2 equals 4x minus 2. Add 2 to both sides, and you get 4 equals 4x, so x equals 1. Now, back to what we were doing. The measure of the angle that we're looking for. The measure of angle DCB equals 53 times 1 plus 1. 53 times 1 is 53, plus 1 is 54 degrees. That was me plugging 1 into here, and you can see that that's going to be 54 pretty easily. And I hesitate doing mental math, but I think that was pretty apparent. Okay, next one. Angle TSR. So we're looking for this angle. TSR that angle. And that's the 11x plus 7. Vertex is on the circle, so the measure of the angle equals one half the arc. If we plug those in, we get 11 plus 7 for the angle is one half 25x plus 2. Double both sides, you get 22x plus 14 equals 25x plus 2. Subtract 22x from both sides. You get 3x plus 2. Subtract 2 from both sides. 12 equals 3x, so x equals 4. If x equals 4, the measure of this angle is 11 times 4 plus 7. That's 44 plus 7, which is 51. The measure of angle TSR is 51 degrees. And that's the odds on the extra practice.